is something that I just love talking about um, because it comes up in every conversation that I have with every client that I have because people engage a coach, organizations engage a coach when they're when they're thinking about change and going from point A to point B. And there's you know there's always at some point in the conversation discussion of of risk. You know otherwise you would have done it already, right? So there's some there's some point where you're stuck in getting you know across that across that canyon because this idea of risk pops up. Um, so it is one of my favorite topics and I talk about it a lot. Um, has, has anybody heard that, um, heard about the lizard brain? They talk a lot about that primitive part of your brain that, you know, from the beginning of time just has you hardwired to react, like, to, to react to danger, right? And it's just, you know, you're a caveman and you need to run away from the woolly mammoths. Um, you know, we also have that part of the brain, it's called the amygdala, um, and it probably really protected us, you know, back when we were cavemen, um, but sometimes it kicks up a little bit more now than we probably need it to, or not really in that kind of, of danger, but it's still like, oh my gosh, you know, there's something at risk, there's something at stake, and I better, you know, and I better be careful, I better <coughs> stay safe. Um, so, because it's a good thing, right? This isn't about this isn't about um, dissolving risk. This isn't about ignoring risk. I like talking about managing risk or confronting your confronting your risk aversion, right? The fact that the fact that you're having those reactions, it's it's legitimate. There's something that you feel is at stake and could be sacrificed if you make a change. Um, and what's important is really taking a look at it and figuring out what's going on and trying to bring in more information so that you're not just reacting from that place of fear and that you're actually weighing things out, taking everything into consideration. And that way, even if you decide not to do whatever it is that feels risky, you've made a more, you know, a more thoughtful decision about what you're doing. So I like to talk about confronting risk aversion and managing risk aversion rather than, you know, tackling it and, and ignoring it because it's important and it really can be helpful. There are times when we're going to say, I'm so glad I didn't, I didn't do that risky thing. So when it comes up, when it comes up with clients of mine, um, there are a number of different ways that we talk about it. Um, and so what I'm going to share with you are just some of the ways that we have that conversation around risk. Uh, the first one. I follow worst case scenario. So you are, I don't know, give me some examples. What, can someone share an example of something that you're considering doing that feels uh -huh. risky? <laughs> yeah. We've been trying to hire someone for over six months and we keep not doing it. Okay, what feels risky about it? It's like I have to pay someone. Right okay. now. So, so when you so suggest that definition, watch. The possibility that something bad or unpleasant will happen. What's what's well, the unpleasantry? Well, Loss the of unpleasantry money. Is, is is that I that I might not be able to pay this person and have to let them go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's risky because if you take them on, you might not be able to pay them. It might impact the company. Great example. Um, can someone give me one more example? Something risky, Robert. I'm actually starting my own firm in July. Uh, yep. Yeah, starting his own firm in July. Yeah, and that's my yep. my, my risk aversion is I'm I'm doing uh, ADA upgrades. I'm CASP, which is a certified access specialist, which is going to fuel my architecture practice, which is going to focus on everything not design related, so small TIs mainly and grocery okay. stores. So my my first aversion to risk is that I'm not taking on design which for architects is, is probably where we get into the, the most trouble because that can really burn a budget. So that's your, that's your reaction, right, to the, to yeah. the fear, but what's, my, what's at stake? Well, my worst case scenario is that business fails and I have to go back to work. Okay, <laughs> okay, so hold the thought, hold the thought. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk you through this, but I'm curious, what feels so risky about starting your own Starting your own company, well, right? Maybe, Where's maybe, the, what's the potential injury or maybe loss? that's the part where I'm a little crazy because everyone keeps asking me, "Well, are you scared? Are you, you know, you have, I, and I'm not, 
I'm not nervous about it at all. I'm not That's scared. Right. I feel like I'm. The time is right. The opportunity is right. I'm prepared for this. Great. So for many of us, because we're all small business owners, what what feels risky is walking away from a paycheck from another organization, right? Walking away from benefits, and that what you know. What if it doesn't work, right? What if it doesn't work out? What if I have to go back to work for you know for someone else? So. When I feel like we're, t when I'm with a client and they're sort of towing the line there, I'm saying, you know, I, I don't know about doing this. I actually, I ask them to go there, right? Go right to that place of the worst case scenario of, you know, all the things that you imagine going wrong, just like unload it, right? I also, I like to call it, you know, going down the rabbit hole too, right? Just, <laughs> just jump, right? Because you're having this debate with yourself and there's something that's really scary about it and the best thing to do is just take a look. Right, so oh, I don't know. I, you know, if it doesn't work out, I'm gonna have to go back and work for horrible bosses, and the pay is not gonna be great. I'm gonna have no flexibility to my schedule anymore. My work-life balance isn't, you know, it's gonna fall apart. Um, you know, I can't put food on the table. I end up working at McDonald's. Right, just like, just lay it all out. What you imagine could happen when you think that nothing works out, right? And what usually happens when we're exploring that, is there's a moment where you love, where you sort of bottom out down here, right? You just sort of, you hit a platform before you actually get down to, you know, moving back in with your parents, <laughs> <laughs> right? You, you know, there's a, there's a little chuckle and the client says, you know what, maybe that's not so likely after all, right? And so we start to backtrack a little bit, right? So what's really happening here, right? Well, if I started this, you know, if I started my own firm, I'd probably give it, you know, I'd probably give it two years. And I'd probably know a year into it how it's going, right? I'd, I'd have some goals, I'd see how I'm doing. If I saw myself getting to that two year point and not being where I'd want to be, well maybe I, you know, maybe I, maybe I would go back to work part time for somebody else. Right? Maybe I would start taking on some of those projects that I'm not too keen on, but you know what? I, I, I know how to stop it. I know how to stop the free fall here. Right? I have I have solutions in mind. Right? And so what what that does, as I said, is it just sort of hit a bottom, and you start realizing that that worst case scenario that you're imagining really isn't that likely after all. Right? And when we hit that point, we can start talking about other solutions. Right? Well, what would happen? You know, what would you be doing at that six month mark? What would you be doing at that one year mark to actually, you know, steer your ship a little bit more? Okay? So, chances are, this isn't, whatever you're considering, it isn't the first risk that you've ever taken. Right? And chances are, you have some support nets in place that you're not thinking of. You have some resources that are available to you. You probably have a backup plan that you just haven't acknowledged. And by taking a look at those, maybe you even back up a little bit here, right? And you're not looking at abyss. You're looking at two years of giving something a try. You've set yourself up with some key milestones, and you're actually going to be fully engaged along the way to know how it's going, okay? You're not out of control in this scenario. And so maybe, Robert, that's, you know, when you say people think that you know, people think that I should be scared. Maybe they're going all the way here, right? Maybe they can't imagine it. Maybe they're too firmly rooted in what feels secure about where they are. But maybe you just thought this through. And you have your plan, and you have your backup plan, and you're ready to do it, right? So, you know, the idea is to just be able to talk some of this stuff out, realize what you're really afraid of, and how unlikely it actually might be. I like my rabbit. Great. Very scared about it. Yeah, I do read all the statistics on how many firms fail, and one of the things that for me is like, I I don't I'm not giving myself two years. I'm giving myself six. That months. was totally arbitrary. I, know, it's totally <laughs> arbitrary. It's like, I wonder how many practices kind of you know start out that way that they don't really acknowledge soon enough if things are failing, and what you know try to rewrite the ship or change the course so that they do succeed. And for for yeah. me, it's it's like if I'm not bringing on new, new hires within six months, then I would have failed. 
Yep, so here you've got your plans, right? Yeah. And, and so in some cases, I like that you brought up this point of like thinking about how other firms you know, that have gone before you have done it, right? And how long they've made it or where their points of failure are. Failure are. That's you know, inf informing yourself so that again, you're not just acting from this like fear place of like, oh no, horrible things are gonna happen. You look around yourself and you look around and you say, look, all these people in this room are successful, right? There wouldn't be anybody striking out on their own if there weren't some possibility of success. So why not me, right? And that actually is a great segue into what I call balancing the scale. This is a very, this is a very one-sided dialogue with yourself. All the terrible things that can happen, right? And we sometimes lose <laughs> lose connection with the fact that this was actually a really exciting idea at some point or we wouldn't be here considering it, right? We just go so far into, you know, fear of failure that we're not looking at the, that possibility of success or what actually just attracted us to try it in the first place. And so part of what you're talking about in thinking about what other firms might be doing is that balancing of the scale. Okay, how do I, you know, how do I remind myself why I'm here in the first place? Oh, the appeal of, you know, working for myself and choosing the kinds of projects that I want to work on and you know, flexibility of my of schedule and working with the kinds of partners that I want to work with. All of that, you know, is over here when you've been focused over here on what might fall apart, right? It's sort of like, um, I like so I like balancing the scale. I like the sort of legal uh, metaphor because, you know, you can't go into a court of law and just pitch one argument and have, you know, have a decision that's made, right? So. Sometimes I will say to a client, well, you're doing a really good job of arguing against making this change and making this transition. Um, why don't we focus here this week, right? Let's just, I know this stuff is there, right? I, I know that the, the fear part of the brain is giving you all of that stuff, but let's just focus right here. I only want to hear why this is exciting to you, right? And you start to balance that out. You know, go home and be the lawyer for the, for the you know, the opposition. Right? So that's just about adding another perspective that we often lose when we get scared of what's at stake. Okay? So this gets a little more complex. Um, but it's actually a really great exercise. And I have shared this with some of the individuals in the room, so this will look familiar. I didn't make it up, so I can't take credit for it. Pain game model, welcome. Um, so, there's some perspectives that are missing here. This is sort of a, a pros and cons. Why should I do it, why should I not do it, right? There's, there are actually additional perspectives that might be helpful when you're considering the status quo, you know, the current situation, and then this sort of future state, right? <clears throat> so I'm just going to write here current and future. So in your case, it might be, you know, keep working for that other company, right? And then future is working for myself, right? Or for you, Gisela, it might be, um, you know, keep working as we are, and this is to add an assistant, right? Was it an assistant or a, another junior architect? Junior architect. <clears throat> so you can actually set up this grid with pain and gain here, right? When we start thinking about something new, Right, like striking out on our own. It's because there is some pain in our current situation. We have too much work, <laughs> right? Um, or whatever the you know whatever the pain is, whatever is less attractive to you now about working for someone else, right? You're feeling that in here, and that was probably 
a trigger for thinking about doing something else, right? I have, there are these pain points in my current situation and I'm thinking about changing something. Or the catalyst might be, this is the gain of the future situation. Maybe, um, I don't know, maybe you met someone who wants to partner with you in starting a company, right? So that, you know, that inspiration came here. Oh, the potential to do something different. But usually, this is the place where we spend the most time. What is the pain of the current situation? And what's really attractive about that new scenario? And yet, we don't necessarily jump to do it, in spite of how comp compelling this might be, or how painful this might be. And these are the reasons, okay? There is some benefit to staying put, right? That is where we procrastinate and we delay on on change and transitioning into something really exciting, there's something that's keeping us rooted here. So, uh, you know, in the example of, you know, I, it's a great example of, you know, going and launching your own, launching your own business or launching your own firm. You know, the current pain might be, you know, a difficult boss, a structure that I don't control, and I can imagine all of those things are really appealing about starting my own firm. You know, it usually pops up in this box, the current game, some kind of stability factor, right? It's familiar, I'm used to it. Potential earning increase. Money, money is everywhere in here, right? <laughs> right, and that's, you know, we're gonna all admit that that's a big part of it. <coughs> Starting my own thing, the pain, the potential pain is how long will it take me, you know, to make a livelihood from this, right? So. What, what you start seeing is that there's definitely a relationship between these opposing boxes, right? So there's some pain here that I think is just here. And then there's some benefit to staying where I am. And, you know, and that might be a difficult part of the transition. If I'm, if I'm really feeling you know, stable and comfortable, uh, you know, sometimes when you've been in a place for a while, you get more flexibility with your schedule. I'm worried that if I change, all this stuff is going to be lost, right? And how long is it going to take me to get my money back up? Okay. Or in the case of hiring, you know, hiring someone else, you're thinking, okay, so the current pain is way too much work. So here, look, it's another body to, you know, to take care of things. But, well, we don't have to write another paycheck this month. I don't have to worry about letting somebody go if we don't add on more clients, right? And so that's my concern, okay? So this is just, it's just a tool for getting your ideas out. One of the things that I love about doing with this with my clients is they might do it as like a homework assignment and then they'll send it to me and they'll, they'll ask, what does it say? What am I supposed to do? You know, what's, the, what's the answer? It's like my magic you know, decision machine. Um, and guess what, it isn't. But we don't always think through all of these elements. And what happens when you start just populating these boxes is you realize that First of all, all of these things relate to values that are important to you, like you know, financial security or independence, right? Or you know, what kind of a manager you want to be if you're worried about you know bringing people in um, and potentially having to let them go. And not everything in the grid is weighted equally, right? So, in a situation where you are the primary breadwinner you know, in your family, the money stuff might just, you know, this is just the biggest thing I'm thinking about right now. And unless I can talk through for myself how this is going to go and how much time I could give it, you know, what the ramp up's going to be, you know, I can't, anything else on here, I can't get away from the concern that launching my own, you know, launching my own practice is going to, is going to, you know, feel risky for a while, right? Maybe it's, maybe it's the opposite. Maybe, you know, maybe you're not the primary breadwinner. Maybe, or maybe you have a nest egg and you have some flexibility so this shrinks a little bit and you can start thinking about some of those other values that are really important to you, like independence, right, and flexibility. So this is just a really great way to organize your thoughts when you feel like you're spinning a little bit on decision um, to map it all out and take another look without it being from a fear place. Any questions about this? Yeah? Um, actually, a comment. Uh, the grid looked very um, similar to uh, 
business plan. When startup prepare the business plan, they have to analyze the risk potentials, um, which is very close to this. You're talking about a squat? Yes. Yeah. So that that is you know strengths, weaknesses, opportunity threats. Opportunity, opportunity threats. Exactly. Right. The squat. The squat's an O, right? Not yeah. An a. So in some way, um, you know, as you said, map it out help you visualize uh, potential risks. It's the same and idea. Help, you know, also maybe resolution will pop up. Yep. It's, it's just a different way of organizing. Right. Yep. Yeah, and I think that that information, probably more the, you know, there's certainly opportunity in here, right? Or you wouldn't be thinking about, right, this is your opportunity and you've already sort of honed in on one thing that you're considering moving to, I think what's really valuable, you know, if you had another grid that had the slot, I think the strengths piece of it, right? So, um, launching your own, you know, launching your own firm, you know, maybe one of your strengths is you've done it before, you know, maybe you previously started something else um, or, you know, started uh, or ran an association or something like that. If you're thinking about your strengths, and what you bring into this scenario, sometimes these these pains of like, you know, a pain a pain of the future scenario might be, um, you know, gee, there's a lot of pressure on a small business owner, right? Like to, to know what to do all the time and how to lead. But you come back to that strengths piece of, you know, I've done stuff like this before. I've always been a leader. So I don't know why I really put that in the pain box because I'm really not that worried about it or I really, you know, I really have a lot, a lot of resources and a lot of knowledge, right, and sort of shrink. So some of these things start to expand when you map them out that way and some of them start to shrink and you can get, really get at what you're worried about but also not lose sight of the opportunity. Any other comments or questions about this? when I use the word reframe, to reframe something. Halftime of a good NBA game. <laughs> Halftime of a good NBA game, can you elaborate? Well, reframe game. You know, you take the information that occurred in the first half, mm -hmm. and at halftime, you adjust according to what you've seen. Okay, I like that. I should have expected a sports set. The sports answer for you. <laughs> um, so a little different, a, a little different. When I talk about reframing something, um, maybe best to think of like a picture frame, and or you know how you sort of size up, you know size up the landscape when you're thinking about taking a picture. You know, and you could do it this way, or you know maybe you reframe it down here, and the picture looks a little bit different, right? So this is about recognizing the lenses that you're wearing or the lenses that you're using as you view the world and as you view the situations that are coming up and everybody's heard that sort of proverbial you know looking at the world through rose-colored glasses right it, you know you can see the world differently when you when you change it to blue right everything can look a little different blues, blues might look a little brighter and I guess reds would look a little purple um, the idea behind the frame game is to reconnect with the assumptions and beliefs and experiences that you have that are coloring your current situation, right? And thinking in this case in particular about risk is important, right? What happens when this word risk pops into your mind, right? Where have you in your life's experienced, life's experience called something risky or felt something was risky or taken a risk, right? Think about how you use that term and what that bring, what that kind of thinking brings up for you. Risky is generally something like that causes fear, right? 
or the, the word risky or the word risk, right? And so just by having that word in our vocabulary, we're sort of pushing ourselves into that, that fear place. What happens when you call it a challenge? Right? Does that have a different sort of sort of energy to it when you think I'm taking a risk versus I'm taking on a challenge? Right? That might change something for you when you change your language. Um, so recognizing that you have this whole set of experiences and beliefs that are coloring what's happening to you right now might help you realize that it's not, it's just actually not as risky as you think. And it's just, it's just a total reframe, right? You're not going through any of these exercises. You're like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking that this is risky because, you know, that friend of mine launched their own business and it didn't, you know, and it didn't work out, right? So suddenly this whole thing became risky. And I'm just basically taking somebody else's experience and I'm mapping it into my world and actually has nothing to do with me. Right? So somehow my perspective has been colored by the knowledge of what happened for somebody else, but it's not necessarily real for me. Right? So it's just this like lens swapping out and the choice to reframe it. Right? The choice to view the whole scene differently. Right? So you can decide that everything challenging that happened to you in your life no matter what happens, it's worth it because you grow, right? There are people who will say, I love a good challenge. This is how I know I'm growing. What's a life, what's a career without challenges, right? When you adopt that perspective, suddenly everything that you're doing feels differently. I have to do this or I'm not growing. I have to try. I have to try something different. So this is just about, as I said, this is about recognizing that you have the ability to choose how you think about your situations and see when fear is sort of getting the best of you and that you could actually swap out the lens and believe something completely different, right? This isn't risky, this is worthwhile. And I can't imagine not doing it at this point, right? Getting yourself to the point where like, I've dealt with the fear, you dealt with it quicker than others, but I'm gonna do this and this is worth it and no matter what happens, I will grow and be different from it.